from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. couple of years we've been working on a project we call the Tangible Media Project. Here we have a lot of items that are on various things that you can hold on your hands. Digital items. So things like CDs, DVDs, hard drives, thumb drives, floppy disks, tape, media that we use right now, media that we probably haven't used in 10 years or more. And all these items are sitting on shelves and they're in danger of deterioration. A few years ago um, we did an inventory going into all the different divisions to get a sense of the amount of data they had on various tangible items. So both looking at the amount of data and the numbers of items and the types of items that they had. Um, at that point in time, we knew there was about 300 terabytes of data, mostly on CDs and DVDs, but also on a lot of hard drives, floppy disks. So that being several years ago, we know now as more items have been coming in in digital formats, that that, I, that 300 terabyte figure is small compared to what we have right now. The Geography Map Division has been scanning maps since 1996 and putting them up on the internet. We have scanned over 37,000 maps and of course that's still less than 1% of the 5 point whatever million maps we have. But there are three factors that affect this heavily. One is copyright. We do not scan things that are out of, that have questionable copyright. We just don't have the staff to deal with looking all that up. We also look at the condition of the maps themselves. And then it also, how much cataloging needs to be done on these materials? Selection is very important when it comes to web archives, particularly at the Library of Congress. Websites are selected for collections based on the themes or events that have been identified by recommending officers or curators in the library. They select content based on their subject expertise, so they're picking websites that are related to the event or the theme that they're interested in. The web is a really big place, so we have to be very selective in what we, we choose to archive. It does take a lot of work, however, and our recommending officers put a lot of time into going out and finding specific websites that they think will be of use for researchers in the future. Any of the items we have here at the library They've been selected by curators. We have decided, we've made a commitment as an organization that's saying that these items are important, they're significant, they're useful to researchers now and into the future. Across the board, if it's important enough for us to have here, it's important enough for us to preserve in a meaningful way. Initially, when data is transferred from our external contractor to the Library of Congress, we put it into tape storage for preservation and backup. When we make it available to researchers, we take a copy of that and put it onto an access server. That copy is not backed up separately, but we can rely on the preservation copy for backup purposes in case something goes wrong with the access server. A lot of these media types aren't in common use anymore. So we may have a three and a half inch floppy disk drive on your machine, but you probably don't have a five and a quarter. And I sincerely doubt there you can find an 8-inch floppy anywhere. So any data that's on these old media, it's in our best interest to get it off of these media as soon as possible and onto servers or onto other places where they can be backed up. Bit rot is very rare, but at the scale that we're collecting things at the library, we're inventorying about one terabyte of new content every day. Uh, even the rare events, even the one, a million, one in a million events do happen. So we need to be able to correct for them and expect them. Um, we really sort of have a dual responsibility. One is we want to make sure that we really are showing the images as the photographer intended to see them. But of course we have a great preservation challenge as well and, and we're trying to balance the two. How do we make sure we're really protecting and, and hanging on to the information and the scene that the photographer wanted people to see at the same time, are we going to be able to do that in a form that really makes this image last well into the future? We want to make sure we can handle this image in a hundred years from now. And sometimes those are contradictory goals. You know, what you have to do to make something look right now may not be the same thing you have to do to make sure you can even see the picture at all in 100 years.
We use a tool that was built in-house to manage our web archive collections. It's called the Digiboard and it is used, used to uh, track the nominations of URLs and then the handling of the permissions. We have to seek permission or send notices to site owners to let them know what we're doing uh, for most of the content that we collect. So our tool manages that process for us. Um, we also manage um, the creation of the list that goes to the, the web crawler that tells the, the tool what to collect for the library's collections. And we also do some quality review using that tool. The, the project I spend most of my time on is CTS, which is a suite of tools to help curators acquire, manage, preserve content. Um, so that includes an inventory system, other, um, other tools including format assessment, um, uh, fixity checking, sanity checking, and a workflow system that allows um, us to piece together those different um, steps in the digital, digital content lifecycle. Well, the access piece of this is really thorny and difficult, um, particularly when a lot of our partners have uh, collections that have a lot of mixed content in them, some of which there's rights issues with, some of which there's just really sticky permissions issues around, say, um, personal information and things like that. So figuring out innovative ways to deal with those problems that let people have access to these collections is, is a key piece of that. Access is available to the Library of Congress Web Archives through an interface at loc.gov slash lcwa. Access to the catalog records is completely available off-site, though some web archive content is only accessible on-site at the Library of Congress due to whether or not the site owner has granted us permission. It's an exciting time to be doing this kind of work. There's a lot of new tools, even the way that we would have done it a year or two ago. It's completely different now. New tools are available all the time. And there's also a lot of interest in the organization in doing this. A lot of these media have been sitting around here for some time, and we've all known we needed to do something about it. But now, because, um, because we're receiving more items in digital format, there's a lot more interest in making all of these items more available and a lot more energy about doing it around the organization. So it's a great time to be doing this kind of work right now. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.